What's up, ladies and gents? I'm your host, Sinus Trainer One, and I've got another Star Citizen video for you today. This time, I'm going to be showing you something that maybe I think a lot of people don't know. That is that you can actually play Star Citizen offline. You can actually play without connecting to CIG's servers. Everyone knows that the game has a very, very bad uh, frames per second uh, quality to it because of the servers that it is used, the network that is being used by CIG right now. Now it's in the process of getting fixed, hopefully to make it better of course, but there is a workaround to where you can be on your own server and not have to worry about CIG server, which means that you can get amazing frames per second. As you can see right now, 75, 81, I mean it's going all over the place, but look how high it is, and I'm playing this in 3440 by 1440, so the only restrictions to my frames per second are going to be the graphics card that you are using now, and your computer and all that kind of stuff, as opposed to just the network bringing it completely down. Um, and for this, I am so, so glad that this is out there, and I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do in order uh, to do this. It's very, very simple, and I'm just going to tell you, I'll also have it in the description below. There's going to be a link, or should I say there's going to be a text that you need to copy and pay, or copy it. So copy the text, go to your desktop, right-click on anywhere on your desktop, click New, go to Create Shortcut, okay? Then you are going to find the folder that Star Citizen is uh, the excuse uh, the executive is run out of, so your EXE, um, and you're going to copy and paste that text from the description into um, that same folder where uh, your thing is. Again, it'll be in the description, uh, it'll explain it to you in there as well, so all you do is copy and paste that into that shortcut, and uh, click twice, enter twice, and then you will have the new shortcut on your desktop, which will allow you to play Star Citizen without a server. Now, the reason why I want to show you this is because the what this unfortunately we haven't been able to see what this game can really do when we're playing it because of the fact that we're so limited to the frames per second. But now that we can actually play it without being on a server, meaning that we can get smooth gameplay and you can actually see the potential of what Star Citizen is hopefully going to end up being. And I can't stress that enough how important that is because for a lot of people, new people out there that, that invest in this game and they back the game and stuff, they're all like, oh my gosh, the frames are so bad. It's an alpha state, we know. But this is an alpha state that can run smooth and that can actually be quite enjoyable. So we're going to get in here. I have recently upgraded from my um, Avenger to uh, to a Cutlass Black because there's a new Cutlass uh, rework that's going to be coming out for 3.0. And so what you see now on this Cutlass is going to be completely different than what we're going to be getting here in just hopefully a few weeks. So I'm excited for that. I've seen gameplay on the new Cutlass and it looks, you know, absolutely amazing. So we're going to go ahead and get out, but just notice how everything is like, oh my gosh, so smooth. Like every time you open that door in the server, it's like it lags for a second. I mean, there's so much frames per second drops. It's, I mean, even though, you know, sometimes because I am running this at a very, very high resolution, uh, that's why I'm not getting those high numbers. But if you're a 1080, if you're running at um, resolution of 1080, you're probably getting close words to up to 100, depending on your graphics card, of course. But here's the Drake Cutlass Black. This has been out for the longest time, of course, but this is getting a new rework, and I'm very excited for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and show you maybe some of the things that you can do when the server is, uh, when you're not actually on a server. So obviously you're not going to go, you're not going to be playing with any friends or anything like that. This is going to be completely just you and some AI in some ways. And I'll show you how that kind of affects uh, different things here. So let's go ahead and enter. Now this is like one of my first times really using the Cutlass Black. I've never had it before until now, but I wanted to upgrade and be ready for when 3.0 comes out. Hello and welcome aboard your Drake Interplanetary Craft. Your systems are online. Launch complete. Landing gear up. All right, so here we are. As you can see, it's just so smooth. 
buttery smooth. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, um, we're going to go to a comma array and I'm going to show you kind of what happens when you're playing in the server. I don't want you to think that you can get in here and do everything that you were able to do in uh, the online version of the game. Um, obviously no player versus player here, but there is some AI. But I do want to note that they will not <laughs> put up a fight. So because there's no AI to drive um, the AI, <laughs> there's no server to drive the AI, they pretty much they spawn in, which is automatic, and then that's it. So go ahead and uh, blow them up. <laughs> But this is actually good practice to to work on your aiming and all that other stuff, so... I tell you, man, every time I look at that, it looks great. So, the things that you can do in this are still turn on that, but you're not going to get any points for it. You're not going to, like, get any, uh, any money, currency, or anything like that for doing it. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to Grim Hex. So... I found an easy way to head over to Grim Hex, and I'm sure a lot of people already know about this. So let's go back to Port Alsar. So let this serve as a, a, a good way for you to test firing your weapons and stuff like that, but, and actually feeling how it would feel with uh, decent frames. So now we're going to bring it back up. Everybody knows that Grim Hex is at yellow, so what you want to do is you want to find yellow, and you want to go way past it. So. Set it just somewhere to the right of it. Give yourself a little bit of time so you know that you're past. And then hit F so that way you'll stop your quantum drive. And now when you turn around, you'll see that there you're far, you're far away, right? So now come in at yellow from this angle. There it is. What this is going to do, this is going to put uh, Grim Hex exactly where it needs to be. It's going to be directly below you. You always want to have um, Crusader kind of looking just like that. And then when you look down, right there. Boom. That's how you, an, an easy, fast way. And I'm sure there's so many people out there that have showed people how to do this. But that's just a, you know, a quick way of figuring out how to get to... to We'll take a look at our ship here in all of its glory. It's going to look even better. From what I've seen, it looks absolutely amazing, the new rework on the Cutlass Black. So I'm really, really excited. The reason I'm switching to a Cutlass Black from the Avenger Stalker is because I have a Nox, and I want to be able to put my Nox inside my vehicle so that when I'm uh, going around on planet side, I can easily go from my ship to something that will get me around the planet. Um, so therefore, I'll have my Nox stored inside, and then... Boom, I'm good to go. But here's the cool thing. So maybe you've always wanted to explore Grim Hex without the fear of, you know, being killed off, like, super, super easy. Because people, there's a lot of pirates around here, right? So here's Grim Hex. Now you can actually explore it without anyone messing with you, uh, without any problems. Uh, you just want to go over here to this side of it. And there's going to be um, there's going to be an entrance, and it could be a little hard to find sometimes, just because of the way that the well, there it is. Perfect. All right. Again, this is just a backdoor entrance. I know a lot of people out there probably already know about this, but... Many ways to get out. Obviously, we don't want to enter turret. We want to open that. There we go. There's a door there as well, so... Hey, 
And here you go. This is how you can uh, enter. Two different sides that you can enter from. And really all you want to do, this is just kind of like the back entrance into it so that people aren't killing you. You want to get all the way over to here. And here you go. Once you find this, see it's just so much smoother it is, you know, it's amazing. Now once you uh, turn on the pressure here, then you're going to automatically, so make sure you're standing straight up and not upside down or else you'll fall. And now you're inside Grim Hex, which maybe a lot of you have not really got the chance to explore unless you were a pirate or you were bad. So this is kind of a fun way to actually have a smooth, uh, smooth gameplay of Grim Hex, which not a lot of people get to do. Because every time I'm in Grim Hex, I get like 20 frames, maybe sometimes 18, 17. So it's never a smooth experience when I'm in Grim Hex. So again, this is just the, the chance and the opportunity to really, really experience. And again, there's going to be a code. You want to copy that entire text, and you're going to implement it into a new shortcut on the desktop. Um, but you got to, uh, f yeah. So once you do that, then um, again, it'll all be in the description below. So check that out in order to figure out how to do it. But as you can see, we can run around the entirety of Grim Hex in all of its glory. The seedy side of the bar. Now, as far as, like I said, being able to shop or anything like that, you're not going to be able to do. But it's just so nice to, to be here. You notice how it says that, but you're you're most likely not going to be able. To, I don't think you can buy. Let me let me see. I see. We can try it on, obviously. But because you're not connected to the server, it's not going to remember anything that you do. But it's just a, you know, like I said, a nice excuse to be able to actually look around this area that you may have not been able to really do before at a decent frames per second. Again, you'll probably have a lot more than me because I am running this in ultra wide because I love my ultra wide setup that I have here. And I will sacrifice getting 50 frames. Um, to have the view that I actually get to have in this game, which is truly, truly amazing. But as far as getting your ships out and other stuff like that, everything works uh, the way you would think it would. See? Selection confirmed. Your ship is currently being delivered to the launch platform. See how smooth it is? I mean, look at this. Never have I experienced <laughs> Star Citizen in such smooth fidelity. I mean, come on. Who has? You can see our Cutlass Black is still down there, and we have our... Now, the reason I have an Aurora is because of the fact that I've got a Nox. So, the Nox substitutes the Aurora, or the Aurora substitutes the Nox because the, the Nox is not in the game yet. There we go. And this is your basic starter ship that mostly everybody's going to be... Flying. I think it's said that more people have an Aurora than any other game, or than any other ship in the game. Welcome to Robert Space Industries. Enjoy the ride. System check. Take off complete. Landing gear raised.
it is just something to experience here playing this game. I mean, you have to try it. Give it a shot. I promise you will not regret it. It will totally be worth it, and let's destroy our Cutlass. Might take a little bit more than normal to destroy this thing because this is pretty bad at uh, at shooting. But you can see how it is getting destroyed though. The damage states. Wait for our stamina to come back up a little bit. There it goes. <laughs> All right. So hopefully I've showed you something a little new, uh, a little unique. Uh, for those of you that want to go out there and explore this game without the fear of being killed by pirates or you know, just want to see how it can run smooth or what it's like for the game to be able to run smooth, this is the chance for you. And uh, I'm so glad that I found out how to do this because this is... This makes the game so much more fun for me just going around and doing this um, without the fear of anything else. Just so I can experience what the game, what its drive and what its purpose is uh, of how it wants to look and how it wants to play and react. So pretty cool stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, I always try to bring you uh, unique gameplays and be as informative as I can. And hopefully I am doing that. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you want to figure out how to do it, it's in the, the, it's in the description. Uh, and the link for that will be in there as well. Or should I say the, the copy that you need to do. So thanks for watching, guys, of course. And I will see you next time. Peace out.